Hey everyone, today we're going to be revisiting a topic that we covered in a more recent video um, where we took a mold from a resin master using a high heat resistant material. And today we're going to be talking about Apply Labs heat. Our subscribers will probably recall uh, in a video we did recently where uh, we used only resin to try to make jewelry molds. This was kind of a, a combination video though where we used uh, two different resins from Soraya to try to, you know, as I said, make molds. Uh, the first one we did was Soraya Sculpt, which actually has a heat resistance and we were able to make a vulcanized rubber mold directly from the resin, which cuts out a whole extra step where you cast from a, a, usually a metal master. The second part of that video was printing a flexible mold in Soraya Tenacious. Now this one didn't really work out so well, um, but it's a topic that we wanted to revisit. So this is going to be kind of part one of that revisit. We reached out to Apply Labs and they sent us some more resins that were well, a better choice, frankly, for doing this type of project. For example, heat, as compared to sculpt, has a much higher heat resistance. And the Apply Labs spring, the rubber flexible material that they sent, was a lot better than tenacious. But stay tuned for that video because, well, we won't be doing that today. So what's the biggest difference between Apply Labs heat and Soraya sculpt? Well, the biggest difference is simply the heat tolerance, what the actual stuff is engineered for. Sculpt is good for up to 320 Fahrenheit or about 160 Celsius, which is cutting it really, really close to the temperature required for making a vulcanized rubber, which for the material we're using is about 310 Fahrenheit. So we're only about 10 degrees shy. This is pushing it to the limit. Uh, here in Canada, this is what we get uh, from our supplier, Gesswin. Uh, this is coming to us from Castaldo. And we have the gold label and white label on hand. We usually also carry the, the pink one, no shrink pink, um, because each color has a different type of property. We're not going to get too much into that, but what you really need to know is that the resin has to be able to withstand the high heat, as we said, about 310 Fahrenheit, and also pressure because in this machine here, this is called a vulcanizer, the pressures that are exerted on the rubber are very high using this big screw on the top. The vulcanizer heats from the top and the bottom plates and basically cooks the rubber. The rubber expands, fills in all those gaps, bonds together permanently and becomes, well, a mold. From this, of course, you then cut it open and you're able to inject liquid wax or you know, depends on what you want to inject, frankly, there's quite a few options. So we found that Apply Labs heat can handle these high temperatures and then some. It has a much, much higher heat resistance than Sculpt. So it opens up quite a few more possibilities. However, unlike Sculpt, more like working with steel almost, uh, this resin can be heat treated beyond the normal alcohol wash and UV curing process. Um, now, you do UV cure it, and that gets it to a certain level of heat resistance, but beyond that, you can take it even further. Apply Labs uses, uh, well, I guess in their testing, they use the Form Cure Machine, which is a post processing uh, thing from Form Labs that basically has UV LEDs that cure the resin on the outside and I assume have some kind of you know, penetrative ability. Um, but moreover, it also has a heated chamber up to 80 Celsius, which is quite high. Now they have a whole breakdown of this on their website of the different steps that you can take. Um, we ended up doing the, well, our machine doesn't get up to 80 C. We have the CW one, which gets up to about 40, 50 C, a little bit lower. Um, so we take it a little bit further and actually put it in our oven. Apply Labs heat can handle up to 482 Fahrenheit or 250 C if you go through the maximum heat treatment process. This opens up a lot of options for this resin uh, beyond that of jewelry making masters. One of the most relevant situations to us was 3D printing in resin FDM 3D printer parts, especially those that go around the hot end. For those of you who don't know, um, FDM printing is basically the extruder type where it pulls in filament 
heats it up around what's called the heat block and it squishes it out and builds a model. Now the heat block for a basic PLA can get up to 210 Celsius, which is not all that bad, frankly. Um, but there are other materials, uh, like some of the PETGs, uh, like PETG+, plus, but mostly ABS, nylon, uh, carbon fiber, things like that, where the hot end can exceed 250 Celsius, which is pushing it for a lot of the, the parts of the FDM printer. Now, I thought, well, you know what, why don't we print those parts in something that can actually legitimately handle it? I've noticed a lot of people in the FDM community, when they print a lot of ABS, the fan, the cooling shroud itself that, that, that's actually blowing on the extrusion is warping a lot quicker than it should because you have to work inside an enclosure at high temperatures and it just puts a lot of wear and tear on the 3D printed parts. Um, so one of the things I started doing was printing cooling shrouds because that is the part that goes the closest to the hot end and tends to deform the most. And if the cooling shroud fails, your parts tend to get really warpy, so it's something that you need to have work all the time. I also tried printing boron parts in resin, particularly those that go around the hot end. Now, this whole thing didn't really work out as planned. Um, I actually just kind of logged onto the Voron site, downloaded their plans and STLs, and I really should have done a little bit more um, reading into the parts themselves and the assembly process because a lot of these things are designed to work with brass uh, threaded inserts, which if these were printed in, say, PETG, uh, you could heat inset them with a soldering iron. You can't do that with resin. So I had to, uh, th these are pretty parts, but they're not very functional. I ended up printing one version of each. Uh, Voron provides plans for whichever hot end you want to use. Um, I believe this one is the Mosquito. Uh, this one is the V6. And this one's the Volcano, I, I think. It doesn't really matter anyway. Um, but I mean, for cases like a Volcano, where you're talking about really high heats, really big heat sink, you need a big fan, I think that this is a really nice application for this type of material. It wouldn't be uh, ridiculous to uh, redesign these parts, maybe with uh, printed threads in place, um, or possibly just having a, a nut that screws or slots into the side. Um, there are ways to get around this, of course, but these parts were not designed for resin, so they just simply won't work. I also printed a few mods for my Prusa Mini uh, with a, a cooling shroud because the Prusa Mini just kind of has like a general blower. It doesn't really exactly cool the part uh, like a Prusa i3. Um, I also kind of reached out of my whole Prusa bubble, I guess, and uh, made this. I believe this is for the Ender system. This is, I believe it's called the Hero Gen 5 cooling system. And it holds the hot end here, but you also have the, this really, really cool looking uh, cooling shroud here. Now this is a much larger system than I am familiar with, but I mean, it looks cool and uh, it actually seems to really work. This is one of those designs where you actually do have uh, inset threads and nuts and bolts and things. So this, in theory, is perfectly usable. Apply Labs on their website also advertises being able to make replacement high heat parts or custom ones. For example, like a heat gun where the outputting air is about 500 Fahrenheit. It is pushing the limits of the resin, but you can design very specific, very custom <laughs> type of add-ons for your tools. They also have a short video comparing a very thinly printed uh, model. It's a, I think it was a scale, um, where it's compared to a tough resin and then heat. And they put it in a thing of boiling water. Water boils at 100 Celsius, I believe. And the tough resin actually got uh, droopy and it just kind of fell apart. The heat handled it really well. Even at those really tiny, we're talking like less than two millimeters, maybe one millimeter sizes, which is of course perfect for our jewelry application. My only complaint about this resin at all so far is that the resin is quite brittle. Now this is coming to 
this, I'm coming to this conclusion rather by the cooling shrouds that we've been printing for the, uh, for the printer parts. And I don't think it's a really fair assessment to say it's brittle because a lot of these cooling shrouds have, well, they're hollow and they only have about a one millimeter or less wall thickness. So in other words, they were really, they were inherently brittle or weak anyway. Um, if you were to print this material thicker, I have a feeling it would act more like a tough material. However, I would still watch if you have sharp corners that they don't chip or break because that is probably where you will find breakage. So it's, it's a very small issue, I find, and it really only applies to certain types of models, but it's still something worth noting. Um, I guess the last thing that I could mention is how well does this resin print? Maybe that should have been at the top of the video. We'll see, anyway. Um, well, simply put, it's very, very easy to work with. You treat it just like a high polymer tough resin. It prints fast. It prints really, really good details. It has perfect bed adhesion. Uh, just overall, it's really nice to work with. Uh, on the SL1S, I believe I run it at two seconds per layer with a 15 second base and fast tilt times. And that translates to, actually, I think less on the Mars. There seems to be uh, a little bit faster uh, exposure times, but it can't really compensate for the tank tilt in terms of speed. So anyway, it's really fast and it's really, really easy to work with. In summary, Apply Labs heat resin is a great choice if you're looking for something tough that can handle heat even at very small sizes. And uh, just overall, I recommend giving it a try. You can find it at the Apply Labs website, link in the description below for about a hundred bucks US per bottle for one kilogram. Uh, they sent us this resin free of charge for testing. Uh, we were not obliged to provide this review. All the uh, opinions are our own, um, but we wanna thank Kevin over at Apply Labs for uh, sending us so much of their stuff to review. Uh, we really like everything that you're doing. If you wanna see more of these type of specific engineering resins, uh, let us know in the comments below and we'll see what we can do. Uh, get subscribed because we have the other half of this, you know, uh, resin thing from Apply Labs to go over, uh, talking about the flexible mold. You definitely won't want to miss that, especially if you're in the jewelry space. So that's all for this video. I will see you guys in the next one.